Hello everybody, this is Stalker Finance, I'm your host David Choyer, and today we're going to be taking a look at a Starbucks stock analysis, and I'm making a bullish call on Starbucks. So here is my thesis, let's go ahead and get into it. First off, I'm going to summarize it in three parts here. Number one, Starbucks has strong fundamentals and a competitive advantage. Number two, I believe it's an innovative company. And number three, I also believe they're currently undervalued. So first off, let's go ahead and look at the fundamentals and their competitive advantage. Let's start off by looking at the stock price. Currently valued at $78.97 with a market cap of $92.3 billion, a P.E. ratio of 28.12, dividend yield, actually a pretty nice dividend of about 2%, a 52-week high of 9 99.72 so it's below its 52 week high but above its 52 week low of fifty dollars and two cents now let's look at the revenue and operating income now i really when i look at these graphs i really want to pay attention i want you guys to pay attention to pre-pandemic because currently they're going to be looking terrible uh, you're going to see Although you're going to see operating expenses down significantly, you're also going to see revenue across the board down. You're going to see margins down. Everything is going to be pretty skewed right now in these last two quarters because of the pandemic. But it's important to look at what it was before the pandemic because that will give us a better view of what will happen when things go back to normal. So if we look at it, it was growing pretty steadily. Uh, just it grew to about $7 billion. Uh, Yeah, not too much to say there. If we go to net income, again, pretty steady across the board. A few outliers, though, as well. Uh, most likely, those could be from just extremely good holiday seasons or product launches or specific things that happened. Uh, just a bunch of different things. Perhaps they, you know, closed different stores, etc., to save money. So there's a bunch of different reasons net income could randomly spike there in the Q1 of 2018 or kind of Q3 as well in 2019. Uh, margins are extremely high for Starbucks to sell a cup of coffee. This is one of their biggest advantages. And this is why selling coffee is such a great business. Because when you sell a cup of coffee, you're selling it for, I mean, they sell cups of coffee for $5. And it could cost you less than 10 cents to make that cup of coffee. Uh, it, the margins are just incredible across the board. Obviously, they're going to be a little skewed now. And uh, they've been a little wonky in the past as well. But Profit margins maintain a pretty good, uh, are pretty good in the coffee market, to say the least. Operating expenses. We have seen an increase in operating expenses over years, over the past years, and that mainly do, has to do with opening new stores and et cetera, just all of that stuff. So opening new stores, uh, hiring more people, uh, creating new products, a bunch of that. But obviously the biggest operating expense is going to be store operating expenses, uh, nothing too drastic to look at here, nothing too worrying to look at, and that's the main thing. You know, is there something really substantial? Like restructuring costs were incredibly high one of these quarters. I'd be a little worried because I'd be like, why is restructuring so high? What are they changing that's so significant? I feel like it's running pretty well right now, but it looks pretty steady. Next up, their earnings. So earnings, they pretty much almost consistently beat earnings every single quarter, except for Q2. They missed it. And obviously, we're seeing a big drop-off in uh, quarterly earnings, and Q3 is probably going to be a large drop-off as well. So now I want to look at some of the news here before we hop into it. Starbucks recently told employees to reduce work hours, take unpaid leaves as demand falls despite post-lockdown ease. This most likely has to do with the fact that people just aren't, the lockdown isn't fully open yet, as well as I think a lot of the government subsidies are starting to run out possibly. And we're also seeing uh, with the protests, et cetera, which is causing even more harm to Starbucks and local businesses. And they're basically there, even though the post lockdown ease, uh, although it was easing the lockdown, all these protests and stuff has caused businesses to have to close up once again, even though they're going to reopen. Um, next up, we, I want to look at something at the very bottom here of the news, which says with small coffee brands reeling, Nestle Starbucks set to grow. And that's something I'm going to talk about later on how, although, you know, they're suffering right now, I think Starbucks is going to come up significantly on top after this pandemic, as all the people who were originally stopped going to Starbucks because they wanted to go to their favorite local coffee shop. Well, sadly, their local coffee shop is now closed because it couldn't make it through the pandemic. And Starbucks is going to benefit from that significantly, even though it's kind of sad to talk about. Next up, competitive advantage here. So they currently have 28,218 stores as of 2018. They're non-franchise, which in my opinion is a huge advantage for Starbucks. Um, as smaller stores die off, Starbucks will survive and take their customers, as I just said. They're able to cut prices to further compete. So they can pretty much just, let's say another coffee company comes up and they start expanding really quickly. Starbucks can just go ahead and cut prices across the board because they're so big, still be profitable because their margins are so solid and because they're selling such a large quantity and they'll just run those people out of business uh, in, a in any sort of price war. 
Um, they can offer deals and incentives to customers because they can afford to take that loss. Starbucks is its own app. It can create new products that others can't, which we'll talk about as well in a bit here. So it just has a huge advantage with how big they are and how much revenue they're bringing in. They have ability to spend a lot of money and take losses in certain places that other companies and local shops just can't afford. So they're an innovative company. Starbucks has moved into grocery space to diversify itself. They have multiple product lineups, such as espresso lines. Let's go ahead and just look at these product lineups really quickly. Some photos, there's pretty bad photos. But as you can tell, they're actually expanding significantly into grocery stores. We see Double Shot Energy, so they're competing with energy drinks, Frappuccinos. Um, I've drank those quite a bit. They're actually really good. As well as the bigger, uh, the lattes, etc., there's a bunch of different products they're now offering in stores. And I think this is really important to diversify. They're also offering their coffee beans. They're offering seasonal products like the pumpkin spice latte they offered in the 2019 uh, Halloween season. So they're offering a ton of different products and they're really innovating here. And this is super important because they're diversifying themselves. So not only they're not just a brick and mortar business now, they're getting into billion dollar industries, which we'll talk about in a second, such as energy drinks. And uh, they're just diversifying themselves. So in the future, if this pandemic were to happen again, although their brick and mortar stores might close down temporarily or maybe only to do drive through. And I think they're still going to suffer through that in the future. Their in-store products are going to help them substantially with revenue and profit. And they're doing more and more Starbucks locations have drive throughs I've noticed. Now, maybe this is just kind of something I've just personally noticed. I haven't actually done significant research on whether they're adding drive throughs to their stores or not. But I've personally seen a lot more. And it seems like they're trying to target places that have drive throughs because it's perfect for this time. They can't go into the store or they can go through a drive through People are in a hurry. They go through the drive through And one thing that's also really big is a lot of these little tiny uh, coffee shops, coffee little shacks, and kiosks that are kind of around, if that's the word to use, around the city. Uh, there's, t I'm sure you guys have seen them. There's all the little local coffee shops, all the different names. And basically, it's just a drive through similar to a Dutch Bros, if you've been there. So they people love just driving through, picking up their coffee, and going. And ordering in advance, especially with a Starbucks app, is important to just go there. You don't have to get out of your car, just pick it up. Uh, some people don't want to have to go wait in line, and they don't want to have to just wait. They just want to order the thing online, drive through, pick it up, done. They got their morning coffee, and they're off to work. So that's really important here, and I think Starbucks has been targeting those types of locations. Almond milk and alternative milk options. Uh, you can get almond milk or alternative milk options in almost all Starbucks drinks. I'm currently... Uh, allergic to dairy this is huge for me as well as a ton of other people who are allergic to dairy so they're really appealing to a very large crowd here and it really didn't cost them much more to do this is the great thing so they're really appealing to a large crowd and again just innovating with new products etc um and now i want to talk about the potential value of these new products so the energy drink market is 53.01 billion it's projected to grow to 86.01 billion by 2026 which is incredible and we've just seen in the past in those past pictures there that they have been producing a significant amount of energy drink like products although it's kind of still coffee espresso and you can kind of get those markets confused i think they're really trying to appeal to the energy drink market because at the end of the day energy drink, energy drinks are directly competing with coffee they both keep you awake they both give you a boost in the morning etc so it's a direct competitor there and uh they're really entering into the space which is a growing and just massive market dairy alternatives 17.3 billion projected to grow to 41.06 billion by 2025 so 2026 i actually think it's going to grow even more than that i think tons of people that i know uh, tons of people in general are realizing that the dairy alternatives are just as good a lot of them are better for you uh, they taste great and tons of people are allergic to dairy it's actually crazy how many people are allergic to dairy if you look into the research and just don't really notice it or just haven't really cared to get a dairy alternative so as dairy alternatives get better and as there's and i've seen them get better substantially um this market's going to grow even more Coffee market is also growing. So 362.601 billion in revenue in the US, projected to grow to 600.322 billion by 2025 slash 2026. So it's basically projected to nearly double in the US again um by 2026 that's incredible so there the, the point here is starbucks is in growing markets every single one of these markets is growing substantially if not doubling by 2026 they're all projected to at least grow by a substantial amount by then and for starbucks to be in each of these markets is a really smart and competitive mood to diversify itself and to grow even faster especially as a brick and mortar business which don't tend to grow very quickly so 
For it to be a fast-growing company, it needs to be in these fast-growing markets. Next up, I simply think it's an undervalued company. The pandemic has caused Starbucks to slow significantly, but Starbucks will make it through and will actually come up on top as uh, smaller coffee stores close. So now I want to compare something to McDonald's. This isn't just how I value companies. I like to take a company that I have a current value at and then compare it to a similar kind of company and look at the company's value there. Because if that company is successful and it's doing well and it has a significantly higher value than the other company, which is also doing the same well, it's like, wait a minute, why is it not worth the same? That doesn't really make sense unless there's some really underlying reason here. So this might be a kind of weird example to compare Starbucks and McDonald's, but Starbucks does offer coffee and they also offer food. A very Kind of a different company, but their brick and mortar business is really what I'm trying to compare here. But the main thing is, let's go through these statistics. So McDonald's locations in the U.S. are 13,837. Starbucks has more locations with 15,149. Now, worldwide, McDonald's locations are 37,000, so about almost a little less than 10,000 more than Starbucks locations worldwide, which are only at 28,218. Revenue. Starbucks actually has done more revenue than McDonald's. McDonald's revenue is 21.08 billion. Starbucks revenue is 24.72 billion. I think the reason for all this is because McDonald's is franchised and Starbucks is not franchised. Starbucks has so much more control over its pricing, over its margins, etc. It can do so many more things than a franchise company. And although franchising is great for growing really quickly, getting your business across the globe like that, and getting tons and tons of locations, um, Starbucks has done this in a non-franchised way, and it's pretty incredible to see the benefits of this. Now, McDonald's is is creating more net income to Starbucks, and that's simply, I think, a result that it has 10,000 more locations, but it's really not that much more net income than Starbucks. So this is all 2018 data. I tried to keep it all 2018 data to keep it even. McDonald's net income was $5.08 billion. Starbucks net income was $4.51 billion. The interesting thing here, for a company, for McDonald's, which has... Less locations in the U.S., although more worldwide, is doing less revenue as a franchise company, and has five and has only 0.5 billion more in net income. Its market cap is ridiculously high compared to Mar to Starbucks. I mean, it's over 50 billion dollars greater than Starbucks. So, in my opinion, if Starbucks continues to grow and its revenue continues to grow uh, in years to come, I'm not talking about the next quarter. I'm talking about a year or two from now then I think Starbucks is going to be incredibly undervalued. Another thing that we want to look at, if you go back to the stock price, it's significantly below its 52-week high. It's about 20% below its 52-week high. And if we go ahead and look at this, it's it's 20% below its 52-week high, and it's 12% below its pre-pandemic price. So although it's made an incredible recovery since the bottom of the pandemic, I still think there's more room to grow. And I'm looking two years out. I'm not being bullish on Starbucks necessarily in the super near term. I think the next quarter is going to hurt really badly for them. Um, I actually think it's going to take a quarter or two to recover. But a year from now or two years from now, if Starbucks is back to where it was, well, that's an automatic 12% gain to, gain to that pre-pandemic price. And to its 52-week high is 20%. So that's a 20% gain to its 52-week high. And I think it can continue to grow as it grows towards the size of McDonald's market cap, as I just showed, as well as entering in to not just be a brick and mortar company, but have tons of different products that it has in stores. They're all in growing and it's adapting. I, the, the main thing that I love about Starbucks here, if I'm gonna just rant a little bit, is that Starbucks is adapting, it's innovating, and it's just competing so well with all the others. On top of this, you see, what was it? Luckton Coffee had a huge scandal. So Starbucks competitor there just went down. I mean, Starbucks is really dominating the entire coffee space. and is going to dominate even further after the pandemic as other coffee makers or as other uh, coffee stores don't survive. As these mom and pop shops sadly don't survive, Starbucks is going to come out on top because it's going to take all their customers either back or it's going to take new customers as they need a new coffee place to go. So I think overall, Starbucks is currently undervalued and will grow at least 20 to 12% in the next year. And again, we're going to see uh, beyond that, I think it's going to be really substantial growth. Um, now, thanks for watching. Subscribe. I just want to say this is not a buy call. I'm not telling people to go buy a Starbucks. This is for entertainment value only. I highly suggest you go ahead and look at all the bear theses for Starbucks and as well as other bull theses. This is simply my opinion. But I hope it gave you kind of a new look into the stock. I usually don't do brick and mortar businesses. I really like to analyze tech companies, etc. But sometimes you find undervalued companies 
in brick and mortar businesses that are kind of hidden gems here. And I think Starbucks is one of these that actually is incredibly undervalued right now, especially when compared with other brick and mortar businesses who are in somewhat similar markets, as well as just the markets that it's growing in substantially and the potential value that Starbucks has been entering into and, uh, and its value into the future. So two years from now, I'm bullish from Starbucks. Or not two years from now, but going into two years from now, I'm really bullish on Starbucks. And uh, we'll see if I'm right or not. I hope I am. All right. Anyways, check out these videos as well. Subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.